Hello, guys. Alex, how are you? I'm good, Martin. You? Yes. How are things going? Not too bad, not too bad. So I'm really good getting ready for Christmas and all the other stuff and so on. Well, hi there, everybody. My name's Martin Tyler. I work for Sky Sports and I'm a football commentator and I'm in the company of two very special people. Norwich City fans will, of course, recognise Alex Tete, a legend at the club, a player who's been through it through thin and thick and a lot of thick as well, including how things are going this season. I'm delighted to have some time with you, Alex. And Nana Badu, who is also well known in a different community, is a, a legend in London for his fantastic work with Badu Sports. And it's an organisation uh, that I've had a connection with because uh, I coach at non-league level and one of our players came in one day in total distress because his brother had been murdered in a knife crime attack in London. And it resonated with everybody and just as one, one person and many who wanted to try and do something in return, I tried to look at the bigger picture and see whether there's anything that could be done um, from, from my perspective, just a little drop in the ocean maybe, but try and help in this particular problem. But preventing it was something that could happen. And I looked for uh, organizations that might be doing that. And I, I through great fortune and a, a wonderful opportunity for me as an individual to come across Nana and Badu Sports. So I fell in love with Badu Sports happily. My company Sky Sports also saw the wonderful work and now there's a link between Norwich City uh, and and Badu Sports so um, could I just ask uh, Nana to explain to everybody how this came about how uh, Nana Badu and Norwich City are now together and and obviously explain that the, the connection with Alex as well. Um, the journey basically with um, Badu and Norwich it came from um, one of the organizations within our office um, where we work with Big Stack and they decided to support just like um, during the, the, the process of like inequality and the height of COVID, they saw the work we're doing and, 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 and literally we just formed that, like, formed that partnership, got in touch with Norwich, an amazing family club. Like when we met them, their ethos around community, support, engagement, and just all around belonging was something that also attracted us and it just made a natural fit in that journey. So yeah, that's literally how it started and then it's just gone from stroke to stroke from there. Well, the great connection, of course, for you two is that you both came uh, from Ghana into different parts of Europe. Uh, what do you remember about that, Alex, uh, when, when you left and, and how you adjusted to life for a completely different culture, I guess, in Norway? Yeah, it was uh, going from a very warm, climate warm country to very cold one to start with uh, it's very two different uh, countries but um, it, it was tough in the beginning uh, living with my family and friends and then and, and to live with my dad in a completely new city and uh, didn't know anyone but uh, it, it became easy after after a while and, and learning new language, uh, getting friends and uh, yeah, it, be, it became easier but it's, it was two completely different uh, cities and, and places to be. Obviously first you, you have to learn the language and uh, me and my sister were, were together with a few that were in a class of a school. Uh, I remember everyone was so welcoming, uh, which was uh, very pleased to me uh, to see because it's, 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 it's not given that people will be that welcoming to you in a different country. Uh, so from there, from my, from my uh, where I'm coming from, is as soon as they knew that I could play football, for me that was it. Uh, it didn't matter that I was from Ghana, it didn't matter that I didn't speak the language properly. Uh, all the boys uh, in my class were, okay, you, you are part of us now. Uh, and, and for me, that's, that's when everything came together really. And, and, and from there, it's just gone upwards to be fair. I think I came here just before I turned 11. 
years old. And um, I remember, I think slightly, because I was a little bit apprehensive about coming here. Um, obviously I had no choice. My, my, my family, my parents and my siblings were all born here and, and all living here at the time. So um, it was like, like Alex was saying, like leaving the life that you're, you know, and you're comfortable with to almost a route and, and start a new one and, and, and make new friends and obviously leaving all your friends behind. Um, for me, it, I remember the first or the second day, and the second day, I tried to go back to Ghana. <laughs> I tried to, um, I, I remember speaking, I was going to remember the route um, from the airport to, to, to that, our, our flat in, in, in in London, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was remembering the route on the taxi here, on the taxi back from the airport. I was like, right, I'm gonna try and walk back and then get on the plane. I had all this plan, and I actually tried to do it, um, but I think it soon kind of diminished as soon as we started school. And um, and like Alex was saying, I think football and, and sports was the, 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 the universal language. The minute they recognised that, I mean, I think the first time I saw the playground and kids were playing football, that was just the place where you all belonged. Alex, how do you think that experience now, some 20 years ago, how how's that made you the man that you are today? Oh, I, I think it, it's made me understand that, like, if, even though I was quite comfortable in Ghana and, and, and my family and everything, uh, uh, it, it, it taught me that it, even in different uh, situations and in scenarios of, of leaving everything behind, uh, it just made me grow up uh, a lot. Uh, it made me uh, I've learned to, to be on myself. Uh, I've learned to, to, to handle different type of situations uh, that made me yeah, it made me stronger, to be honest, uh, mentally. Uh, that I can, I can, I can achieve anything, and 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 uh, even though I'm, I, I go through bad spells and everything, I always remember back uh, how I, I dealt with with moving and how I dealt with even sometimes this, the the situations that wasn't that good uh, in Norway. How I dealt with it and how I uh, I learned from it and moved on. So for, for me, it's made me it's it's made me a stronger person. The, the first two years, probably I didn't fight that much because everything went went well. I had I had Chris Hilton as the coach. He brought me here. Uh, he's half Ghanaian as well, so we had a good relationship. Uh, but as soon as he, he he left, yes, that that that, that fighting started. To be honest. Um, and, and I'm, a, I'm a person, yes, f fighting for something I, I, I do really well in, in, in my own sense. Uh, um, and, and that's what I've done until now is I've, I've been myself, I have, I've, 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 I've trained, I have, I've coped well. And, and at the end, things gone back to being in my favour. <laughs> With all the managers that I've had, uh, it's just been resilient in 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 doing my work, in in believing in myself, and in 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 thinking positive, um, and not losing that smile. What was the trigger, Nana, that turned you from being you know you're a footballer, that being you know having if you like a relatively normal life to becoming you know almost like a, the Pied Piper with people following you around around your part of London something must have said one day I've got to do this what was that I think the key things is like witnesses like I've always known and felt a certain way about different situations and scenarios and, and, and feeling like we wasn't in any control but I think the key trigger for me was almost witnessing a, a kind of like a violent incident and and it wasn't just the incident itself, it's just the look on the face of the, and I call them children, who were part of that incident and, and the amount of them who did not want to be there because, but then also there was no other opportunity or options. It seemed like this was my only thing that's been offered to me at the time. So that was the trigger, like their, their children, surely if we inspired and gave them more aspirations, gave them more options and opportunities to develop themselves it will change and, 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 and that didn't sit well with me and it wasn't and, and the only thing that always sticks to my head is often is that looking at the faces of those young children during that incident they 
they didn't realize or understand what it was that they've done or what it was that's happening. It was just like, it, it was such a shock to them. And I looked at them thinking, look at the innocence in their faces. They, if you gave them another option, if you, if you made it a more level playing field, if you find a way to do that, would they be here doing this? No, they would be elsewhere and living and dreaming like we all do. The education system is the, is the best place for everyone to kind of be. And we will start out, so how do we make sure sports become fundamental within their education system and helping them de develop mentally, not just physically, but also mentally to ch tackle these challenges. Alex, people my age, um, we've seen a huge change in, in society. Do you think that we're moving as a, as a together nation now? What's your experience been like? And do you, do you think these initiatives of, of 2020 are working? Personally, being in this country and, and lived in almost, I think, nine years, uh, uh, they've had like difficulties to deal with as well, as the same as in any other countries in the world. Uh, but I think hopefully with this, <laughs> with this lockdown and, 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 and everything, I think hopefully people now see that it is important to work together uh, to create a better society. Many, many companies and, and, and uh, organizations are trying to push through so that things are proper equal, you know, uh, regardless of, uh, of, of who you are and your gender and your race and everything. So I think in, in some form it is, 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 is going forward, but it's a long way. It's not something you achieve just overnight. Uh, so I think that there's work being done and, and you just need to keep keep uh, working hard on them so things get better for everyone. What did it mean, the recognition from the Football Association? I know you're a very modest guy, but to have Sol Campbell sort of doorstep you in a this is your life kind of moment, really, um, it must have been a, a bit of a shock, but a very pleasant one, I guess. Um, you know, it, it was. It was um, when we had Sol come down and give the, the, the teacher an award from the Lionhearts. Um, it was a, a pleasant surprise. Like, we, we don't really... I don't know what everyone says, but we don't do anything to be seen in that way. We just do it because it's a it's a must. So setting up our food bank, helping our community, we're not doing it for anyone apart from knowing that this is what people within our community are struggling with. So we're just going to help them. And and with no none of the rules, none of the like you know, we're not not feeding you because your um, immigration status are not great. Like it's just giving them the rights of humanity. But to have um, recognition and also have our team. Um, our staff and the community kind of nominate um, the organization in that way. That, 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 was, that was just the, the, the thing more. It's great to have Sol Campbell uh, and, and, and the Lionheart recognize us, but just for the community to recognize that, um, that was that's important for us. But yes, um, he now follows me on, on our social, so which is great. I like to claim that we're best friends. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was, a, that was a very um, proud moment. For, for the organisation as a whole and my amazing team that are working to make this happen. Well, I hope you can say that Alex Tetty is amongst your best friends now. <laughs> yes, he <laughs> yes, has to be, he has to be. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> Alex, looking ahead for you, do you see uh, some thing of a mentoring role in, in the future as you, you look for challenges? I'm sure you've got some more years in football as a player still to come. Besides speaking to you two guys today and learning about what NANA and organisation is about, uh, even for myself personally, I've thought to myself, it's like whenever I stop playing, I'll, I would like to work with kids. Um, so uh, I, I'm looking forward to be involved and, 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 and wherever you guys or whatever, uh, I don't know. You, whatever you give me, I, I'm sure I'll be able to 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 help, and I'm very eager to help as well, because it, it is a very good cause. Uh, what what Nana is doing, and 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 to 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 help and work with kids is something I've been I've been uh, looking forward to for a long time. So I'm I'm uh, ready to go uh, and and to and to give advice and and to help in the best possibility uh, way that I can. It, ha it has been a, a, a joyous experience for me talking to both of you. I, I thank you so much for your time. 
for your efforts. It's always been a pleasure to commentate on you, Alex, because I know when you come out to play, you'll give it the lot. You give it absolutely the lot. And I think it's a lesson in life for everybody, as you say, whatever the gender, whatever whatever race, um, that, that we're only here once and, and we should do, do our very best. And I'm looking at two people on the screen now who've done that in their respective lives. And to join them together today has, has been special. For, for me as a, an individual, but also representing Sky Sports as well. So thank you for your time. All the very best for the future. Nana, I'll see you. And Alex, get back in the Premier League and then I can be shouting, <laughs> he's going to shoot from 25 yards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's going to score. It's going to be a, a Tete Thunderbolt. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Martin. It's great talking thanks to you. Thanks, <laughs> Nana, thanks, you thank as you. well. Thank you. Thank you again for the opportunity, guys. And thank you for your time as well, both of you. It's been amazing.